Hello and welcome to I'm Every Woman TV. It's our first anniversary today and we're so glad that you're here with us. Um, it's great to have loyal viewers and it's great to grow to one year. It's been a great year. Today we have a really special show lined up for you today. And we're featuring our first guest is Dr. Daniel Rad, who is both an MD and a doctor of naturopathic medicine. He's here to talk about a very important topic, women's health. Often, ladies, we put ourselves last and it's to our detriment. So today we're going to talk a little bit about women's most common chronic diseases, the complications and the solutions. So you not only know the warning signs, but you are prepared. And then we're going to have Do uh, David Cohen coming in. David Cohen is the host of Small Business Big Ideas radio show. He is a business coach, and he's also a new author of the book, Bust Out, Ignite Your Inner Entrepreneur. He's going to be talking a lot about baby boomers in business and growth strategies for baby boomers in business. And statistics show that most baby boomers in business are women and growing every day. So please stay with us. We're going to have a great show and we're going to get going right now with Dr. Daniel Rad. Welcome, Dr. Rad. Hi, Janet. How are you doing? I'm great today. How are you, Dr. Rad? I'm great. Thank you. So we're talking about a very important topic, women's health, chronic diseases. Um, Tell me a little bit more about yourself, and then we'll get into the questioning. So I mentioned that you are a medical doctor. Yeah, I'm MD. General. I'm graduating um, from medical school in Italy. I'm MD and general surgeon. But I'm involved in uh, natural medicine by any means, all type of, uh, let's say, uh, technique that I learned in natural medicine. And mostly I emphasize my uh, practice in energy medicine, actually. So they are uh, almost 30, 35 postgraduate I have. I don't remember all as oh, much wow. as to say. <laughs> but people, they can go in my uh, website and see my medical credentials. It's a long list. But anyway, uh, the most uh, chronic disease of women from my understanding for the last almost 30, 40 years of uh, medical activity, medical field, uh, is... Uh, but I see depression, anxiety, negative thoughts and beliefs, worries, too much worries, too much fear of noun or unknown stuff. And uh, what I see different age of women, they are different disease may come up. And we know that osteoporosis, osteopenia, arthritis goes above 45, 50 and high. And in young age, I would say, uh, mostly I see a fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, autoimmune system related disease, inflammatory disease. Uh, there are many, 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 but what I see normally uh, people, women who are suffering from disturbed sleep, insomnia, and which ends with chronic pain here and there, uh, muscle pain, joint pain, but Janet, when the pain stays there or any illness, any symptom stays there and doesn't go away, by itself won't go away, and there is no any tool in medical field to eliminate it totally, it will take energy of the body. It will take energy of central nervous system. It will take energy of autonomic nervous system. Therefore, it will disturb whole area, whole body. And normally, I don't see the body as a part of bodies, but I see that in whole. That means uh, there is, uh, uh, let's say, heart is not far away from stomach, the stomach, and so on. Mostly horm hormones imbalances in women is a big problem. And I see 75% of women, they go, they are taking some type of uh, hormone supplements, different way. Uh, still, they are having problem. Still, mm. their problem is not cut. So, Dr. Rad, why is it? I mean, the statistics show that women are higher risk for these type of chronic illnesses, including heart failure and what have you. Why is it that women suffer more than men from these type of things? Why are we uh, more subject to having chronic illness? Uh, there is a specialty or a uh, woman is a specific individual. Woman is creature that is really specific. I want to use some word, don't panic when you hear this word. I say a woman is not human being but woman is angel. 
Okay. Oh, angel, that's mm, nice. Yeah, really they do. And what they do, they put tons of too much energy. They give service, do, think, worry about children, worry about husband, worry about their life, personal, financial, political, whatever you name. They put too much. I mean, that much they give, they don't receive that much. Right, we're this we tend to put problem. ourselves last. Yeah, that is wrong. That is totally wrong. I know. We put the wife uh, role, the mother role, the daughter role when we have elderly parents yeah. to take care of. Uh, yeah. Even the friends role sometimes before yeah, our own but needs. But giving too much, receiving not that much causes problems. And we know that we are a uh, unit of vibration and our body physically is moving because of that vital energy or prana. If there is any disturbance, blockage of energy in the system, so therefore any disease may come up. So you mentioned the, this block, and it is a, re, a repetitive thing, right? It can be go ongoing for years, therefore leading up yeah. and building up to perhaps not just heart disease, but stroke, also cancer. Um, Many things may come up. When mm -hmm. uh, there is a blockage of energy, but like mm -hmm. energy, what does it mean energy? Yes. Energy is the power that we don't see. Mm -hmm but we can feel it, we can sense it, but we don't see energy. And this energy called vital energy in human being, that is vibration of electrons, vibration of molecules and whatever they are moving. And normally they are disturbed by negative emotions. Okay, if somebody feels sad, for sure hormones, they are disturbed different way. Heart rate goes up and down. Let's say blood circulation changes, stomach feels the same. Somebody is afraid, kidney starts to work faster. Urinary bladder cannot hold it. So anyway, each organ, each system is affected by each specific negative emotions, negative thoughts, negative beliefs, and from combination of them. So when combination of them involved in such a case, that's why patient gets, uh, goes through uh, chronic disease. If any symptom or disease lasts more than six weeks, is called chronic. When it becomes chronic and gets worse, then they call that syndrome. When they say syndrome is really a uh, tricky uh, word. When they say syndrome, that means uh, indirectly, honey, there is no cure for you. Unfortunately, but yeah, this in is natural, a common thing in traditional yeah. medicine, there is no cure. They but say. in natural medicine, we have different way, different strategies, different techniques, different art in medical field. We can use so, anything. So, what are mean, some of those techniques in 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 your way of doing things? Energy medicine. Energy, energy medicine, medicine through energy is is a very vast, huge uh, field. I cannot take in few minutes, but through this uh, uh, energy medicine, we can do all. There is nothing they can resist. Why don't you define energy medicine and also chronic illness? Because I don't think our audience maybe understands the difference between what, what you define as a chronic illness and what you define as energy medicine. Okay. Now, when we talk about chronic disease, that is the disease which is lasting longer than more than six weeks, and we see that last for years and years. So let's say fibromyalgia lasts forever. Depression lasts forever. Not two, three percent of people by chance, they find their way, their unconscious mind helps them to get rid of that. Anything remains, stays in body more than six weeks is called chronic disease. When it's chronic disease, everywhere in body is involved, gets involved. And complication of such a symptom that you mentioned in the beginning is uh, getting through, going through different disease. Somebody may have constipation after a while, gets hemorrhoid and then gets diverticulitis and then gets uh, uh, colon cancer. So this is So these are some of like the warning signs in, yeah. in the way that they would appear That's right. over a long there time. There is no any uh, chronic disease may not get worse and may not get involved with uh, the other different, may not cause other different diseases to come up. Now, have you noticed an, uh, an increase in like chronic fatigue syndrome, fibro fibromyalgia, uh, autoimmune deficiency? Are they on the, on sort of on the increase in the last, let's say, decade? Yeah. And what would you attribute that to lifestyle? Dep depends on many factors. One of them is 
if one little symptom, very mild symptom, lasts more than six weeks, will disturb everywhere. I mean everywhere will disturb glands, will disturb hormones, will disturb digestive enzymes, and consequently, as a complication again, uh, will disturb all each organ one by one and all, all each system one by one. So therefore, uh, this body uh, hardly, I can say, can get rid of all these problems through uh, allopathic medicine. So it becomes so, uh, so complicated, becomes so confused that they cannot do nothing. Because in allopathic medicine, we say, okay, headache, this is painkiller, this is constipation, this is laxative, right, this is just, you know, remediate temporarily. But in natural medicine, normally we go to the foundation of the problem, find main reasons, normally is not one, two, three, and uh, eliminate them from there and build up immune system from the foundation, come up to healthy. Conditions. So in order to, to be able to do that, you have to really analyze a patient and a patient's uh, medical history. Yes. And you have a particular methodology for that? Yes. My approach towards such a, most of my patients, they are chronic disease. They are coming with chronic disease that they didn't get any help in, allo in allopathic medicine. So my uh, strategy, my pr thing is, the policy is this. I sit down even it takes hours and hours, I don't care. So I go through past emotional and past medical history of the patient and get them step by step in detail and let the patient go re-study and come up to see why, what happened, what emotion. I realized that in my practice, uh, there is no any uh, sickness, illness, disease, which is not started with negative emotional issues, which is not started from fear and worries. And also, uh, do you look at things that, as uh, the type of medications they're taking and how they're interacting together to cause these type of problems? For sure it does. Uh, when we talk about pharmacy or pharmaco or medicine, in, in Greek, pharmakia means poison. Oh, really? Toxin, poison, toxin. Read the uh, dictionaries. And when we say that uh, pharmacology, that means uh, poison logic. That means studying the poison, uh, how poisonous they are, what they can do. But anyway, uh, chemicals normally, uh, they make something good, but meantime, they do something bad. So this is called side effect of medicine. And for sure, they cause problems. Now, when someone comes to you I, I, you, I know you just said a minute ago that they may have tried the traditional medical route first, they're not getting any answers, maybe they're being pushed around from one doctor to a specialist, um, you know, being given a lot of tests, perhaps even a lot of Band-Aid meds that aren't working for them. Um, does that not just contribute to the emotional state that they're already in? Uh, since you've mentioned that the emotional state is, is a big culprit behind it, when they're not getting the help that they need and they okay. suffer continuously, does not, not contribute yeah. to the emotional state. In allopathic medicine, when patient goes to doctor, for sure stuff with family doctor, his job is asking what is wrong here, pain here, their problem, what is that? This is the medication, take it. I don't blame on medical field. I don't blame on doctors, specialists. Uh, I, I, I blame in medical science is not that good, that sophisticated can help. And maybe I have seen some family doctors say, okay, maybe you are nervous, that's okay, take it easy. But just telling take it easy is not enough because emotional wound this woman have gone through for some reason, there are many, many reasons, many, many type of negative emotional issues or emotional ones, they must be deleted from their database. Otherwise, we'll keep running the situation, we'll keep running the life of this woman and make them, make her to be really, I'm sorry, this world have really non-pleasant, non-happy life. Wow. Well, we don't want that. Okay. So, you know, we're going to take a quick little break. And when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about the solutions to these chronic sure. problems.
Welcome back to I'm Every Woman TV for our first year anniversary. Before the break, we were talking with Dr. Daniel Rad about women's health. We're talking about women's chronic illnesses, the complications and the solutions, and we're going to get to some of the solutions right now. So Dr. Rad, before the break, you were very good at explaining sort of what causes or the warning signs that a woman should look for when she feels that she's going to be suffering or has the oncoming of, of a chronic problem that could lead to the breakdown of any major organ. You mentioned hormones was a big part of it, uh, hormonal imbalances. What is the best way to determine if a woman is having some sort of hormone uh, imbalance? Is it strictly by a blood test or is there other methods? No, there are uh, many things that may show. Uh, one of them is their health condition. If we see the first sign for me when I see the woman is sad, down, introverted, depressed, kind of mild to severe depression. And then the first thing I ask about the age, hormones, and mostly about thyroid gland. Normally right, hypothyroidism is one of those uh, diseases that causes depression. So in this case, needs to get some hormone supplement, I mean thy uh, thyroid hormone supplement. And uh, then we see from different signs and different symptoms what is going on. Is that related to uh, hormones or not? We know that hormones, they are catalyzers. In other words, if there is no hormone, no function will take place in our body. Physiology will be pathology. So anything happens, for sure, hormone is involved. And meantime, uh, through blood tests, we can find that what hormone is lacking, what hormone has problem. What about saliva tests? Are they accurate? Saliva test is a kind of traditional, uh, I would say, yeah, must be, uh, must be accurate, yeah. And is there anything else like warning signs in the eyes or uh, yellowing of the skin that John For did? sure that uh, clinical inspection normally shows that what is going on. If I see a patient comes in uh, with yellow sclera, or uh, but then I right away direct my diagnosis toward uh, liver and so on. Yeah, complexion of, we call that clinical inspection or diagnosis helps us uh, so much to just start and direct our diagnosis. Liver is a big part of uh, what goes on. I, I know if you have a fatty liver or something like that, it will cause problems. It will even prevent you from losing weight. And yet today, um, because we're bombarded with, bombarded rather, with um, you know messages from television, from print ads, what have you, about eating healthy and taking uh, vitamin supplements, a lot of women do choose to take uh, cleanses that are supposed to break down the liver content and help. What's your take on that? Do you think that that's a positive thing from or not, uh, not such a positive thing? It's a kind of uh, helping situation. From my understanding, eating healthy is good, but not necessarily is, is necessary. Uh, mind must be healthy. When mind has problem, mind is a software of hardware, which is our uh, body system. So if mind has problem, if you eat the best, healthiest, uh, luxury food, when you are angry, I swear to God, you cannot digest nothing. When you are worried about something, when you are afraid of something, when you are planning, I say patients, when you eat, uh, no phone call, no TV, no newspaper, no argument, no talk about medicine, uh, business and nothing. Just concentrate and socialize with your food. Say that how beautiful you are, mm -hmm. how nice you are. I will digest you and enjoy and grow up. So mind is important for me from my point of view rather than having healthy food and having a tons of those supplements in health stores. They are useless if digestive system is not doing well. And digestive system will not doing well when mind has a full, a filled up with negative emotional issues. Well, we talked a lot about the complications, so let's get a little bit into the solutions of how you treat these chronic problems. So again, you said uh, diet wasn't going to do it alone, neither were uh, supplements. Would exercise help to correct a, uh, a mind that's in a negative state? 
Yeah, uh, we have different uh, stages here. The way you are talking about supplements and eating healthy and exercising, this is our duty we have must to do, especially women must do, because normally they are they overload themselves and they they get exhausted. That's why they get more sick than men. And as a maintenance, they have to dedicate specific hours in their life to themselves to do meditation in order to clean up their mind out of those, uh, let's say, non-healthy uh, thoughts and beliefs and do physical exercise in order to, uh, let's say, uh, make their physical be more healthy, be active and take care of their food, have healthy and uh, good enough uh, supplements to uh, to, uh, to, for, to, to forward to system whatever they need. But again, uh, most of disease, they come from two, two ways. Digestive system problem caused by uh, mind problem. Negative emotions, negative thoughts, emotional wounds, they are the main reason of any disease. So now how do you specifically and uniquely in your practice target this emotional mind problems? What, like what specifically do you do for your patients to help them overcome the mindset issue and then that can lead to their health improving. In uh, such a, let's say, a field, I use energy medicine again. There is a technique which is called negative emotional release treatment. Uh, has nothing to do with psychology and psychiatry, uh, whatever. It's a straightforward technique that allows me to help the patient uh, to have access to his own, her own database and dive in her own mind, let's say, ocean and find out what are wrong there and pick them one by one based on their severity and seriousity and then I help them to delete them. So this technique I, we cannot talk about here because it's too long, but this specific technique um, may and will make negative emotion be gone in a second. The same way you have access to your database in your computer and the program you don't need it deleted is gone. Will not come is, it, is it that easy? Like how long realistically does it take to uh, replace a negative thought with a positive one? Okay, normally uh, we don't re replace negative with positive. When negative or positive will go automatically in there. And it takes time, depends on uh, how many issues the woman has and how severe they are, how chronic they are, what complications they have, what uh, consequences they they created. So each case is totally different. We cannot say that the problem with Miss A is equal the same. Miss B needs so many hours must be there. Each case is different. We human being we are unique. We are never we are the same, and nothing looks like uh, each other problems. So I don't know. Depends on many 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 factors. So walk me through, because I know today you also have a giveaway for an analysis of this sort. You call it a complimentary consultation, and it's worth $120 plus tax to the first viewer who emails in to claim the prize. And uh, the email address they need to use is Jeanette, J-A-N-E-T-T-E, -T -T -E, at yourmarketingmagnet.com. Now, the person who is lucky to receive this, win this, the bearer, uh, can you give me a little uh, walkthrough of what they should expect yeah. with this uh, uh, consultation? We will contact uh, from our office, and normally I do first uh, consultation examination is the first session. I do that between 12 to 2 because I want to be one by one with patient, not be distracted with other patients. Um, 45 minutes to one hour average, I need uh, so much time to analyze past medical history, past emotional history of the patient. So these two factors, they will lead me, they guide me to find the main reasons of the problems. And I let the patient ask any question they have. In case if it takes longer and we didn't finish the story of past medical, past emotional history, we book another hour, so we'll come back later on the same week or following week. Until I'm happy, satisfied with all information I needed, then that's the time I give plan and protocol, whatever must be done to this patient, I put on the table and advise her to start. Okay, so you prescribe sort of a regime for them that 
uh, I guess if they follow properly over a certain course of time can lead to significantly improved sure. results. Um, you mentioned energy healing a lot. And just as we're um, closing out a little bit towards your end of your segment here, uh, can you define specifically energy healing? What what do you mean by that exactly? What is energy healing? Okay, your question is really interesting and uh, is very is not that easy to answer your question in two minutes. Well, just give me because a it's very <laughs> huge. It's, we have. People, they have to know more about energy. They have to know more about uh, superconscious mind, quantum physics, quantum intelligence, whatever you name it, which is that uh, we are made out of and which that they keep us alive. They, they guide us to do whatever we have to do. In other words, human being uses uh, energy unit in his system, which is called mind, which is called unconscious mind. That's what woman has more than man because they have no five senses but they have six senses. Anyway, using oh, this right. energy... We have the extra <laughs> saying. Yeah. Uh, having this uh, energy guiding, directing to the body, uh, that infinite intelligence knows where to go, what to do, when to do, how to do, all will take care of that. But this is the uh, technique that a practitioner must be good at it, really. Okay, well, I trust you're pretty good at it. Thank so uh, we're just out of time for today, but I wanted to make mention of the fact that you are here as part one of a part three series that we're doing on women's health because I am a big believer in women's health. I think that, uh, as we said earlier in the segment, women tend to put themselves last. They That's tend to put bad. everybody's needs ahead of their own, and it's very important that we take control, ladies, um, get our health in order, get our mind in order. I really believe that when you are productive physically and personally, it will also spill into other areas of your life, like your professional life. So it's really, really important. I'm very glad to have you with us. Thank you. And thank you for part one. Uh, when you return on December 17th for our holiday show, we will continue this conversation on women's health and we'll focus more on stress. So sure. stay, uh, look forward f to that, ladies. And then I want to also just re-announce that there is the giveaway today that you've very generously given a one-hour complimentary uh, review um, of your entire health situation uh, with prognosis and uh, diagnosis and suggested prognosis worth $120 plus tax. Please email in Jeanette, J-A-N-E-T-T-E, -T -T at yourmarketingmagnet.com to claim that prize. It's going to the first one we'll receive. And uh, I want to also mention your website again for further information on Dr. Rad. Uh, it is www.curesallergy.com curesallergy.com. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Janet. And mm -hmm. uh, we'll be right back with David Cohen, who is going to talk to us about business growth strategies and his new book, Bust Out, Ignite Your Inner Entrepreneur. Stay with us.